Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. This is part eight today, and I want to continue to talk about male dominance. And really, um, I need to start again, because I talked last time about this women's march and uh, uh, I talked about how women are just as fallen and sinful as men. Now let's look again at this statement that God made after the man and the woman sinned. In Genesis 3.16 God said in the second part of 316 it says to the woman he says in pain you will bear children however or in spite of that your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you so it's very obvious obvious that this ruling of the husband over the woman also is enforced because of the desire of the woman for the man. Now, some translations, probably very few because I looked at quite a lot of them, they said the desire, the woman has a desire to dominate or manipulate the man. That is not a correct translation. It is just plain desire. The woman has the desire for the man. Now, what does that mean? She has the desire for the man. Well, that desire means that she desires him. She wants him. Okay, she longs for him. Now, I believe that is built on the fact that they were separated. And in the beginning, they were one. And so there's that strong need for the woman to still connect to the man. It seems like the man has lost it a lot more than the woman. But it seems like the woman still has this awfully strong desire to still uh, bond with, with her husband. And that's what it's talking about. But this desire is so unhealthy after the the fall has become so unhealthy that she it's almost like a, a an addiction and um and also the reason why the man was able to dominate the woman now we can look at that, and um, I have said before that both men and the women were affected by sin, and they both want to control and have authority over, and they don't, they're not willing to have an equal, you know, really an equal relationship. Because when you desire somebody so badly, uh, then that other person is not free. You try to manipulate him, that's true, but it's not what it says. But that could be the result of it, that you manipulate that person so that desire will be fulfilled. So the reason why there is male dominance is also because of women desiring men and not wanting to stand up for themselves. Um, I said before that women desire men so much that they put them in the place of God and of course then it's easy for the man to rule over the woman so women are also to bl be blamed for that re ruling of the men I've said before that women so many women they don't want to be responsible they want to be taken care of oh I have seen that quite a lot 
seen that extremely loud that we, uh, many women, you know, they even get married just to be taken care of all throughout history. We have seen that. We have actually seen that, that, that women get married or are being uh, given into marriage just so they will be taken care of some by some uh, some man now that is all feeding into that uh, male dominance so we are all guilty um, of allowing male dominance to continue we all are from the beginning um, it it just happened to become this way because we were, you know, we are sinful. But yes, I, in my book, I dedicate quite a lot to this, you know, male dominance, which I don't think it's just totally the men's fault. I mean, they, they have done some pretty um, bad things, men have, in, you know, in history and they're the ones that go to war and start wars and um, and just have a hard time keeping peace. But whose fault is that again? We women raise boys. Okay? We are the ones who make boys or men what they are. We have a choice. We can raise boys um, aggressive, we can promote aggression, or we can promote gentleness. We, pay, we can promote cooperation. We can promote uh, responsibility. But so many times, maybe as women, we don't do that. So it also falls on us that we have male dominance. So many reasons why. So, still, male dominance did exist and does exist. I don't deny that. Um, it is full, the Bible is full of male dominance. Full. I mean, you can go back to um, as far as you want and you see male dominance. Um, Abraham seemed to have a good relationship with uh, Sarah, but he still listened to her and, you know, oh yeah, it's okay, I'm just going to take your concubine or I can, I can take your maid and I'm going to try to have an heir with her. Um, well, that wasn't so wonderful. But again, Sarah had a role in this. And then later on, what did she do? She uh, got jealous of Ishmael and she kicked out Hagar. And so we can see definitely sinfulness in all of the patriarchs, starting with Abraham. And um, well, we can go to, to David. Oh my goodness. What kind of male chauvinist was he? Or Solomon? Um, male dominance is was definitely the, the you know the case with David and Solomon. And Solomon, how, how many wives? Uh, David had plenty, um, and you know even had the husband of of uh, what's her name? His last wife. Um, I want to say Abigail, but it's not Abigail. It's, um, well, it's not important, but he had the husband of one of his wives killed so he can get married to her because she was pregnant. I mean, that is like male dom dominance to the core. So all throughout um, Bible history, that's all what men did. They dominated. Um, again, it is was the result of sin, and um, they were not excluded from it. And then we go, you know, all the way through um, history with the Jews. They all 
most of them dominated their women. Uh, women didn't have any um, before, I said that before, uh, under the law of Moses, they were equal. But in reality, under Talmud, they were not. Um, during Jesus' time, the Jewish men, they prayed, thank you, God, that you didn't make me a woman. Um, now, how discriminating was that? Women were, you know, almost treated like slaves. All they were is, so they were used to create an heir. And the Jews, since they constantly strayed uh, uh, from God's commands, they rather uh, followed the rules of and traditions of the cultures around them. And so they didn't treat their women very nicely. So there's Jesus and came Jesus around and his disciples were all affected by the Talmud and by the way culture treated women. So when treat, uh, Jesus introduced a new way of dealing with women, the disciples were like shocked, very shocked. So male dominance happened. It happened because of the fall. It happened because people were not controlled by the Holy Spirit. So then when the Holy Spirit came, um, men and women still had to be reformed. The first disciples, again, they were stuck in their culture. And they believed the way women were treated was normal. And so they continued most of the time with these false assumptions about women. Women couldn't be witnesses. And maybe this is the reason why actually Jesus used uh, women for, as witnesses for, their, for his resurrection. So, yeah, these first disciples, they accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But that didn't change the culture. It took them quite a long time to change their cultural beliefs. Then Paul came along and he was a rabbi of rabbis. Well, guess what? He exactly continued the same thing. I mean, it took him a long time. He was converted. And when he was converted, it took him a long time to put away some of these cultural beliefs. Cultural beliefs about women. So he continued many times these false beliefs about women. Now, he was pretty open towards women. He had a lot of women um, friends, Christian friends, that uh, helped him and supported him, just like Jesus did. But Paul still was stuck in his culture. And some of the things that Paul wrote, we really need to see in this cultural perspective. Did he write it because of culture? The culture of its time? And I will be talking about that later on some more. But some of the things he said had to do with culture, not necessarily what God's plan was for women. He was used by God to really show us what the church is supposed to be like. And with that, of course, also the role that women have in the church as equal members of the church. So that was more of his focus. But the thing that happened is, as time went on, the Roman Catholic Church in 3, I believe, 16, took over the uh, the Emperor Constantine, he took over all the Christian churches at that time. He united, brought all the leaders of all major churches during that time together. 
and he made himself kind of pope over them because he was the first pope and he determined what's going to happen in the church and so by that time 300 the roman catholic church kind of took over and during that time women the gains that women have had made in the churches which didn't last very long because the people that were converted to christianity they still had a very strong tie to culture and specifically to the greek greek culture and the greek philosophers and women didn't have very many rights under those greek philosophers like socrates and, and aristotle they were nothing but breeding machines too and um and so when the roman catholic church kind of got started under constantine women again lost all their rights in the church just the little rights they did gain they did lose now also let's put put it this way that women in the early church they were not educated because of the culture they were not educated and so they were kept in the women's quarters. It was um, not allowed for women to be out in public or to speak in public. And that was Roman law and Jewish law and Greek law. It was the law. It was the public law, not the law of Moses, that women were kept almost like locked up, most of the women. So when Paul came, very few women were educated and so there's things that paul said and also uh, the reason why more men were in leadership is because of that because of the cultural uh, circumstances and the fact that women were not educated men they were not respected most of the time and so how in the world can you start a church with women that were not respected in culture so jesus and paul had to uh, put in male um, elders male overseers because of the circumstances of culture that does not mean that is law that was not the law Okay, that was not the intent of Jesus. That just happened because of the culture. And we need to see that when we look at the Bible, we need to see that some of the things in the Bible are cultural related things. And we will talk about those a lot more in detail, you know, later on. For right now, um, we just going to stay with the little bit that I, I just mentioned. And so male dominance could continue in the church simply uh, because of culture. It is not something that God has ordained. God never ordained that the man needs to rule over the woman. He never ordained um, that the man or men need to be in charge in the church. That is not, not correct. And we need to realize that and accept that, that it has become a cultural norm. So even today when men say that it's biblical, there is no proof. Now, I just read Genesis 3.16, and it says, because they sinned, the woman desire was for her husband and he will rule over her. Now, that is not a command of God. He didn't institute that. He didn't say, well, now, you know, he has to rule over her. No, he will. It was the result of sin. And, in a sense, her desire, too. Her desire allowed that man to rule over her. 
So we see that was not something God wanted. God didn't want us to sin. He wanted us to enjoy paradise forever. He wanted us to have uh, intimate relationships. Um, just, uh, it's very important to understand that if you want an intimate relationship with the opposite sex, one cannot rule over the other. One cannot be in charge over the other. That does not create an intimate relationship. An intimate create relationship is created when both people are equal. Both are being treated as humans with respect and dignity. That's the only way you can create intimacy. Everything else will fail. And God wants us to have intimacy. That's just bottom line. If I'm as a woman just uh, act like a child, an irresponsible child, and I want to be taken care of by a husband, um, and I don't want to work, um, I want to sit on my tushy, um, then that is not an intimate, you will never have an intimate relationship with your husband. You'll have an adult child relationship, not an intimate relationship. And so God wanted women and men to have intimate relationships, not one that is dominating the other, not one that is manipulating the other, um, not one that's not taking a responsibility. Um, so that is not biblical. And my book is looking at these things and, and really pointing out the mistakes and the inter interpretations, the false interpretations that have been happening because we did not build on a solid foundation. And again, that solid foundation is that God created the first human being, man and woman. Uh, that's just the solid foundation. If we cannot even get to that solid foundation and um, that the man was not created um, first, then I think it's very, very hard to correct all these lies that have been created. So, when we look at male dominance, again, it did happen. And it still is happening today. And we still have a long ways to go. But we cannot get anywhere unless we have the Holy Spirit. I want to just really talk to men and women right now. Not just women. But an equal relationship a real equal relationship needs to be built on Jesus Christ. He's the only foundation. Yes, I know there's marriages out there where both people are probably not or may not be believers. And they have maybe great relationships, very equal relationships. But it's very hard to have a truly equal relationship when I'm a fallen human being and I'm selfish and eventually the relationship will fail and it will fail because we both the man and the woman are selfish and we are not connected to the source the loving source the kind source the understanding source the patient source which is Jesus Jesus is our life he is the tree of life. And we have been disconnected from the tree of life. And because we are disconnected from him, we are not capable of being holy. We're not capable of really having relationships. And that's just the bottom line. It destroyed the possibility that we really have relationships intimate relationships it's just no way that a person who doesn't have Christ can have an intimate relationship I mean it's hard enough for Christians or truly believers to have these intimate relationships and so I will end with that today again I'm I'm just telling you know, people, 
we cannot do anything. We cannot have truly a good relationships without without Christ. We are lost. We are narcissistic. Uh, we're selfish. And so the only way we can get rid of that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit will change our cold and selfish heart. So with that, I'll stop and I will continue next time. I'll see you then.